Now, Rick, how many total picks do you think you've thrown in your career? Uh, well, I order them 60,000 at a time. You're lying. I'm not lying. I mean, we order at least a couple times a year. Hey everyone, it's your girl Emily Curl with iHeartRadio and I am so excited to be here with the one and only true rock stars, Cheap Trick. What's up? How are you guys? Good, good. Now in front of you, we have our iHeartRadio's The Box and we've handpicked some special items for you to relive some fun memories, some key milestones. Are you guys excited to dive in? Let's go. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and reach in and pull out that first item. Oh, look at that. The cheap trick. Our first album. Look how handsome we were in those days. Who is this guy? <laughs> it's uh, 1977. We recorded it in 76. And uh, it was produced by Jack Douglas. And he's, uh, we're still working with him. And uh, there's some good stuff on there. Yeah. Side A and side one. We had no side two or side B. Patty Smith tore our picture off the wall when we walked into the studio because we took her spot. So she was pissed at us. <laughs> Let's go ahead and bring out our second item. Now, oh this is God. a special one. This is a throwback. <laughs> oh, there's John Sykes. <laughs> we have iHeartRadio's own John Sykes. He has a long history with you guys. Tell us, when was this photo taken? He was in college, and uh, he was helping us get around towns. You know, he'd show up, and he'd always go get us pizza. Yeah, that's, uh, that's him. Uh, he was like a college rep to us. And um, he was the best college rep we ever had. No wonder he <laughs> didn't stay as a college rep. <laughs> hey, John. Hey, John. Oh, hey, you man. look different. Yeah, I do look different. It's 40 years I'll do that. <laughs> it's great to see you guys. Amazing. Yeah. When, I, when I heard I got invited, I had to see these guys because we were children together. Yes, we were. That's right. And I was so proud of you when you got in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because I was there at the beginning. And Live, you're as good as any rock band out there, probably the best. And you always remind me of The Who. You played like The Who. You know, every band could be covered, but The Who could never be covered because they played a different way. And that was Cheap Trick. And I remember my friend John Landau managed Bruce Springsteen. And we, we were sitting together that night you were inducted. And, and um, I said, they're like The Who. He goes, exactly. They're like The Who. And I said, and they could never be covered. And he said, yeah, there's about five bands out there. You could never cover their music because they just, it's written, scored differently. And uh, and that's what you did. So I want to always. I never said that to you, but I used to see you play live every night, and I say this is the best rock and roll band on the planet. John, thanks for taking care of us uh, uh, in Rockford, Illinois. Hey, I bounced stacks on my knee, <laughs> and I remember. I remember. I remember going to see Robin. I remember. I, I remember Robin's family. I remember your family. I didn't meet. Tom, I remember Tom had a German girlfriend. He's probably still does it, but don't tell his wife. <laughs> Yep, you had great families. I, used to go, I remember I, we'd hang out on the porch in Rockford, but yeah. we worked hard. We worked hard together. And, and you guys were an amazing friggin' live band, man. We owe you, John, from all that bad pizza you used to bring to us. <laughs> exactly. All those, and my Toyota Corolla, taking you to all those radio stations. And torturing those people. I said, you better play these guys. They're gonna be big. They're gonna be big. <laughs> great to see you. Say hi to Tom. See you, okay, see you John. Bye -bye. Be safe. Bye-bye. Are we ready for object number three? Oh, yeah. Okay. Bottle of sake. Uh-oh. We have Japanese sake in here. As an ode to your global success and your special connection with your Japanese fans, tell us yeah. a little bit about that relationship. Well, in 1978, we went to Japan for our first time. All the shows were sold out, and and we got to uh, smash some uh, sake barrels. The Japanese fans were unbelievable. That was uh, where we recorded. The, all the music it wasn't just at Budokan, but it was at Nagoya, uh, Sapporo, and, and Sendai, and a bunch of other cities around Japan. But the Japanese fans treated us like we were, like we were really good, and we we're like, we felt like it's the Beatles. We we even got in some uh, magazines, like with uh, Queen and Kiss, and for some reason they put us in there as their younger brothers. That's right. We still are. <laughs> And that's incredible because that brings us to our item number four. This is actually a video. So this is I Want You to Want Me live at Budokan. Uh, Such a significant performance, an you. unbelievable crowd. When you see this, what does this take you back to? Well, I, I remember I Want You to Want Me. That's, he, he made that thing famous. 
And they told us uh, before we did the shows, make sure you talk slow because the Japanese, you know, they they wanted to learn the English from you. Or they wanted to hear what you said rather than something else. And so, talk slow. So you know, it's the like the next song we're gonna do is from our new <laughs> album. So you know, we don't okay. really talk like that. We talk really fast. But I'm sure they wouldn't understand what we say, or at least me. So, but uh, it was cool. You know, it's it's a uh, it's like iconic uh, phrase, sort of like. Give me liberty or give me death or day of infamy. I want you to want me. You know, same thing. How did it feel to have the crowd singing those words back to you? Well, they were the smartest people on earth. Uh, they liked us. They liked us uh, and put us on the map, sort of, uh, before anybody else does. So, my plan was just stay there because they liked us that much. Okay, this next thing we're pulling out of here: yep. pick man, guitar picks. I don't want to hit his computer. We have throwing guitar picks. Now, Rick, how many total picks do you think you've thrown in your career? Uh, well, I order them 60,000 at a time. You're lying. I'm not lying. I and mean, we order at least a couple times a year. And we have the most overhead of any touring rock band. on That's the right. We waste more money than anybody. I mean, I, start, I started <laughs> out throwing picks years ago. And for the first two years of Cheap Trick, people thought my name was Fender. Because it said Fender on the pick. Yeah. And then after that, uh, you know, I've never, uh, I've never sold any, but there's a lot of them on eBay that get sold. But I do, I, it's like a, it's a little gesture. Robin can't throw out like a, a PA system or like a calling card. Let's bring out the next object. Now this one is two parts to it. Oh, well, thanks whoever for giving this back. I appreciate that. <laughs> this is so show us what we have. made out of uh, <laughs> women's panties. Uh, we have the dream eye mask. We have a police badge for obviously in honor of Dream Police. That's so, so cool. Yeah. And tell it's, us uh, a little about about the making of this album. What does this bring you back it's to? It's a real one. Well, we've made the album with the. Uh, it was the first album we had that really had kind of a concept because it had a had a title that uh, that conjured up some sort of video thought to it, and uh, we we played it to the hilt. We. Although Robin's a great actor and Tom and Bunny at the time. I'm the worst actor. If you need a lousy actor, I'm your guy. I mean, and the, it's such a fan favorite. The fans love it so much. I mean, this is such an iconic one. Let's bring out the next object. Oh, Guardians, yeah. Yeah, they begged us to, to play on that and we finally gave in. Yeah, we're in there. You gotta wait till the very end. They saved the best for last. Yeah, we're in a lot of TV shows and a lot of movies, you know. That 70s show is still on, you know, you can still find that and stream it. Yeah, that's us, and we we just did a sh something for uh, for him today, a Colbert show. Yeah, we did the co old Colbert. We did the theme song for that. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, we have time for one more, and we need to pull out something very important. So if you want to reach in for that last item. Oh, I got it. In another world, congratulations! Oh, yeah. The yeah, new album. album. Look at this that. is your album yeah. release celebration. What can fans expect from this album and this music? Oh, it's fantastic! Are you kidding? It's our twentieth studio album. It's cheap trick. My God, we're the most famous opening act in the world. There you go. Well, we're excited. Thank you for diving into the box and sharing these stories with us. This has been so fun. We're so excited, everyone. Cheap Tricks new album, In Another World. Wow, look how well I match it. All right. It is out now. It is awesome. Go check it out. Cheap Trick, thank you guys so much for being here. It's so happy All to right, have you from you guys. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.